Well, I'm very happy that I'm not responsible for monetary <laughs> policy, that I have to make sure that the transmission into the real economy functions and also works when we have the change in the monetary policy setup. So this is, of course, a very delicate situation for all our colleagues in the central bank systems. But on the other hand, aren't we happy to have such a problem? I mean, mm. we, we can go back to uh, normal monetary policies again, to normal interest rates in, in, a, in a cautious way. Mm. And uh, we are doing this at a time when the economy in Europe, for instance, is uh, finally returning to steady growth. So basically, uh, it is a very comfortable situation. Mm. Uh, there's no sense that uh, there, there's, there's no question uh, that the economy has uh, been on a steady path here in Europe, but, but you look globally as well. It, we are really seeing synchronized growth here. Um, you think people are perhaps overlooking the risks uh, given just how great things look right now? This, this risk always exists. Mm. I mean, uh, just take the, the big monetary issues or the big uh, stability issues or take the, the big political picture. I mean, if we really put multilateralism at risk, then we have a problem, in particular in Europe, but also in big other parts of the world. Mm. So I don't overlook that. I don't overlook potential bubbles and all these things. Mm. But uh, addressing these issues on the, on the solid basis, which we can do now, after having been inward looking in Europe for, for the last 10 years, is a good situation. Let's bring the conversation um, back to the region here. You last week came out and had some strong <clears throat> words for the UK as it relates to Brexit, so I'm saying that they will suffer without EIB money. Um, how comfortable are you with where things stand right now and what exactly is the impact? Do we have any more clarity? Well, I'm. Uh... Uh, I'm a rational man, so uh, <laughs> although I could get emotional on Brexit because I'm really, really sad about that decision, mm. we have now to live with uh, that and make the best of it, uh, both for the people in the United Kingdom and, and in Europe. Um, we are so far quite satisfied with the way Michel Barnier, the chief negotiator, has be, uh, negotiated on behalf of all EU 27 institutions, mm. and we are part of that. So from that point of view, uh, it's okay. But uh, we have to find a way now to think about the future of the relationship between the United Kingdom and Europe. That is uh, not in the first place an issue for banks, yeah. although of course the, the financial place of London is uh, heavily affected. No, it is a, a, a very, very important question for, for trade between the United Kingdom and, and the European Union. Mm. The question the, that this is not resolved yet, that is still open for me completely. Uh, how do you reconcile the need to keep the British Isles together uh, in a customs sphere and at the same time not break Ireland out of the customs union. So nobody wants a hard border, but how can you avoid it? So all these questions are still open mm. and uh, this will make us uh, think a lot in the next months. Uh, from the European Investment Bank perspective, the UK has 16% stake in the bank. How painful will that loss be? It is very painful. I mean, we can, we can deal with it because we have a very strong shareholder support among the 27. But the fact is that we are a very, very highly leveraged bank, uh, the by far biggest multilateral construction of this kind in the world, and therefore a reduction of capital by 16% paid in and callable capital, and this contingent liability still exists and will remain to exist, that is a blow and it will have an overproportional effect. It's so to speak uh, inverse leveraging in the, in the downsizing. So from that point of view it's painful. But even more, I think it's painful because the United Kingdom is such a strong partner in the European Union. Uh, it has a very sound economic policy outlook. It has fantastic projects and uh, the United Kingdom, which does not have a strong or big national promotional bank yet, is doing a lot with EIB when it comes to infrastructure financing, to technology, to uh, renewable energies and all these things. So I think the, the citizens in the UK at the end of the day will recognize that they will miss us. And we will, will miss them because for our balance sheet, the, object, the project in the United Kingdom, the assets are very, very good. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.